self-help is an emergency measure to be used only in cases of sudden or extraordinary misfortune. If people require medical care in the course of normal, everyday living, they should always be treated by a doctor. However, when disaster strikes, you may not be able to obtain trained medical aid in time. There are many forms of disaster. They can happen to you and your family at any moment. This film is one of a series on medical self-help. Its purpose is to teach you what to do in an emergency situation when there is no doctor. Modern hospitals provide the utmost in specialized facilities and services for the sick and injured. One of the most vital of these is the ambulance service. Ambulances are used not only for the fast transportation of patients, but of greater importance for their safe transportation. Safety in moving and handling injured persons is a responsibility shared by everyone entrusted with their care, doctors, nurses, and orderlies alike. But suppose there are no doctors, nurses, and orderlies. Suppose a disaster takes place in which scores of people, perhaps most of the population of an entire city, are left without professional medical help, without even the skilled help of police and firemen. Among the victims are persons with fractures, burns, lacerations, internal injuries, and various degrees of shock. They have received emergency medical treatment. Fractures have been splinted, Bleeding has been stopped. Measures have been taken to combat shock. The problem now is to transport the injured to shelter. Suppose it is your problem. How would you go about it? One victim has a broken leg, which has been splinted. He may also have a broken back. Another is in deep shock caused by excessive blood loss. This child has a head injury. Bleeding has stopped, but there is danger he may have a fractured skull. This woman has a foot injury. It does not appear serious, but she cannot walk. Remember, you cannot call for an ambulance. You do not even have a stretcher. But these people must be moved to shelter. It is your responsibility to decide who must be moved first and how he must be moved. Victims in deep shock should be moved first, for they are in critical need of shelter and warmth. Those with controlled bleeding and splinted fractures who are not in shock can be moved later. You must improvise a stretcher out of any available material. If you have a blanket or tarpaulin, lay it flat on the ground. Now lay a pole across the center so it extends several inches beyond each edge of the blanket. Lay a second pole parallel to the first with a margin of blanket beyond it. Fold the margin back over the second pole. The weight of a victim on the folded back margin will prevent it from slipping. Whenever you move anyone by means of a stretcher, bring the stretcher to the victim. When two people lift an injured person onto a stretcher, one supports her head and back, and the other supports her hips and legs. Remember, she is in shock. Keep her warm. Keep her quiet. Keep her flat. When carrying a stretcher, the bearer in back should be out of step with the one in front. This prevents jogging and provides a more comfortable ride. A blanket stretcher can be made without use of poles. To do this, lay out the blanket, tarpaulin, rug, or other suitable material. Fold opposite lengthwise edges into a tight roll. These provide a solid grip in place of poles or other supports. Four persons may be used when lifting the victim onto this type of stretcher. Three kneel alongside, and a fourth positions the stretcher beneath him.
Remember, when carrying a stretcher, it is more comfortable for the victim if the rear stretcher bearers are out of step with the front bearers. This child has a head injury. Bleeding has been slowed by a loose dressing, but there may be a skull fracture. He must be moved to shelter. And you do not have a blanket or any other wide piece of material. But you do have a jacket or suit coat or a shirt. You can make a good stretcher out of these garments by turning the sleeves inside out. Pass a pull through the sleeves which extend along each side of the inside out garment. Smooth tree branches or garden tool handles may be used for the poles. Remember, only the sleeves must be turned inside out, with the poles passing through from the top to the bottom. Before using this, or any improvised stretcher, test it for strength. Carry the stretcher to the victim, not vice versa. This type of stretcher provides the strongest support at the top and bottom of the garment. This man has a broken leg and possibly a broken back. Any movement of broken bones in his spine may damage the spinal cord and possibly paralyze or kill him. He has been instructed to lie quietly and not to move. But you must move him. He must be taken to a place of shelter along with the other casualties. When carrying him, his back must be supported by something rigid, something that will immobilize his spine, such as a door. You will have to improvise long strips of suitable binding material, strong, but soft. Even though blankets may be scarce, it is worthwhile tearing one into strips. The strips will be needed to tie the victim securely to the rigid stretcher to prevent movement of his body during transportation. If he should fall off or even be severely jolted, serious and possibly fatal injury could result. Always bear in mind a basic rule in giving emergency care to the injured. Be careful not to inflict additional injury. When lifting someone with a spine or neck fracture, or a suspected fracture, do not bend or twist his neck or back. Three persons are needed to lift the victim. on the stretcher, tie him down so that he cannot roll or slide. But make sure the ties do not cut off circulation or press against any injured part of his body. Do not hurry. Haste makes hurt. To prevent his head from rolling, support it by placing firmly wadded coats on each side. forget that his life may depend upon the manner in which he is moved and transported after serious injury. Move slowly and step carefully. The last victim to be moved from a disaster area is the one with the least serious injury. If a stretcher is not required, use a manual carry, especially if she does not have to be transported very far. A useful carry is provided by each rescuer clasping one hand about his own wrist and clasping his other hand about his companion's wrist. This is called a forehand seat carry. To use it, the victim must be conscious 
and able to place her arms around the necks of her rescuers for support. Emergencies are unpredictable. In the event of fire, explosion, earthquake, or some other disaster, you may be the first and only rescuer to reach a victim. If he must be moved from danger, drag him along the ground. Use a rug, a blanket, a drapery, or a coat. If nothing else is available, drag him by his own coat. But do not move the victim any farther than necessary, just enough to escape immediate danger. Then you must examine him to determine the extent of his injuries, and you must provide emergency treatment for his injuries. Remember, examine him, give him treatment before you move him. If you cannot get help, an unconscious person can be moved short distances by means of the fireman's drag. Straddle him and tie his wrist together. Loop his arms around your neck and continue to straddle him as you crawl toward shelter. Another victim may be less seriously injured, although unable to walk. In this case, use the piggyback carry. Help the victim to get to his feet without putting weight on an injured limb. Turn around and pull him across your back. Take your time and watch your step as you carry him to shelter. In transporting the injured to shelter, it is important to observe several basic points. Do not move an injured person until you have given emergency aid for such injuries as suffocation, hemorrhage, fractures, and shock, except when there is immediate danger of further injury. Whenever moving an injured person with a stretcher, carry the stretcher to the victim. Use a rigid stretcher for people with spinal or hip injuries and make sure the victim cannot fall off. Carry stretchers out of step to avoid jogging and always walk carefully. Remember, although you have given the victim emergency medical aid, his life is still in your hands. Thank you.